Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, today, we have quite uh, the esteemed panel of experts on the matter of the Japanese ivory trade. Uh, we're here to talk to you about that today. Uh, here in the center, we have Mr. John Baker, the Chief Program Officer for uh, Wild Aid Japan. And to his right, Aidi, Aidi Yamawaki, the Director of Wild Aid Japan um, and also partner in Tears of the African Elephant. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and here to, my, uh, here to my immediate right, uh, we have Masayuki Sakamoto-san uh, of the Japan Tiger and Elephant Fund, who is a lawyer. And at the end here, we have a uh, non-fiction writer and journalist, uh, Miura-san, Hiroyuki Miura-san, who has copious hands-on grassroots experience with poaching in Africa. We will be starting out with an introduction from the panel, followed by a Q&A. And then at the very end, there will be a photo session of every involved person. So media with cameras or video who are interested in that, please stay for the last part, the photo session. Thank you so much. And with no further ado, on to Mr. John Baker. Take it away, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Just to clarify, uh, I'm the chief program officer of Wild Aid for the whole organization. Not I am sorry. <laughs> um, just for the record. Um, thank you all for joining us today. We're here to talk about uh, a rather depressing topic of the ivory and elephant poaching crisis that has uh, decimated populations of elephants in uh, much of Africa. Unfortunately, uh, still to this day, 25,000 or more elephants are still being killed for their ivory. Uh, as you know, there's been a global movement to end the ivory trade as a way of stopping the poaching crisis. Uh, many countries, including China and the United States, uh, Taiwan, uh, others have already taken steps to end the ivory trade in their own countries. And uh, remaining are a few countries, Japan unfortunately being the one with the largest ongoing legal ivory trade, who have yet to take steps forward and uh, try to proactively end the, uh, their participation in this trade, which may be continuing to stimulate the poaching crisis. Uh, countries such as Thailand and Vietnam have not quite implemented bans, although they have strengthened their regulations sufficiently as to um, constitute quite a strong uh, step forward, Thailand in particular. Vietnam has, has changed their laws in a rather admirable way. The problem with with Vietnam is that they have not done anything to implement those new regulations. So having the regulations on paper hasn't really um, resulted in much impact. As you have seen from many of the recent seizures, some of them very sizable, uh, eight tons, uh, 11 tons, uh, especially the most recent uh, series of seizures reported from Singapore. All of the shipments were en route to Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam also is the, the entry point for those uh, shipments of ivory to go into China. Uh, China, while they have implemented a ban on ivory, uh, and taken quite admirable steps, especially their customs agency, to uh, crack down on ivory trading. Uh, their ban makes any buying of selling of ivory illegal. Um, China Customs has also reported, uh, and you'll hear more of that from my colleague, has reported just this in the first six months of this year, 23 shipments of ivory from Japan to China. So the ivory from Japan is also being sold uh, to China. Anyway, Wild Aid is part of uh, many other groups around the world who are trying to 
lead a global uh, response to end the ivory trade and protect elephants. Uh, we're here working in Japan so that Japan can also join that group of people and, and, and other countries and organizations who are trying to become part of the solution for Africa's elephants. And we're very cognizant that uh, only exactly a year from now, the Olympic Games will be coming here and Paralympic Games will be coming here. And um, this will bring many, uh, the eyes and the tourists and many representatives from many African countries to Japan. And we're hoping we have time now to make a difference ahead of that. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us today. My representing uh, the Tears of the African Elephant, an organization I founded seven years ago. And this was something which we set up several years ago. And we set this up several years ago to uh, work towards uh, working on the issue of protecting elephants. This was a very challenging issue. Testing, testing, the English interpretation. Are you able to hear us OK? Yes? Um, can we get someone up here to switch, to help switch the slides, please? Testing, testing, English interpreting, testing. English interpretation, testing. Again, uh, again, the club apologizes for this. This actually happens very, very rarely, but I can see our technicians working on the problem right now.続けても大丈夫。あ、大丈夫そうですね。はい。大変お待たせいたしました。しかし、なかなか日本での現状が変わらないということもあり、あの、ワイルドエイドはあの、消費と需要をなくしていくスペシャリストなので、彼らの力を借りて日本の現状を変えていきたいと思いまして、え、3年ほど前にアプローチをい
正式に日本の,あの象牙の商品をなくしていくためのキャンペーンを一緒に展開していけないかということであのあの一緒にやってまいりました、えー、日本の現状をですねちょっとインフォグラフィックにまとめたものがありますので私があの話すよりもこちらの方が分かりやすいかと思いますので少々こちらをご覧くださいあちょっとまだ画像が出ていないので、ね、はい。Once again, we apologize for the、uh, very annoying technical issues.、Uh, I'm sure it's being worked on right now as we speak. じゃあちょっと待っている間に言葉で説明させていただきますが、はい、あの日本はですねあの残念ながらあの造形の問題においては先進国でありながらもかなり遅れを取っておりますで背景を申しますと80年代にまず日本はあの世界の造形の消費の火付け役としてあの79年から87年の間に世界の増が130万頭から62万頭まで減りましたその時の 67% を日本が消費しているんですねでそ,こでそこからあの日本は世界の増減の消費の火付け役となりますけれどもあの89年で国際取引が禁止されでそこから少し増の数が回復してまいりますがあの2011年からまた象の密漁が増えましてで私はアフリカで育ったんですけれども私と私のパートナー滝田明日香はあの、まあ、この現状を何とかしたいということであの2011年12年にかけて地球のアフリカ象が 10%1 年で消費されたんですねでそれを現状を何とか私たち日本人象牙を消費する日本人の力で変えていきたいということであの活動を始めました。でえっと、先ほどちょっと見ていただきたかった動画をこちらで再生させていただきます。日本の現状のまとめになります。音が出てないです。ありがとうございますであの日本の現状は本当に今何も一番の問題は中国のように富の象徴として象牙が消費されていたのではなく何気なく実用品として消費されていることです。あの 80% ハンコとして消費されていますがやはりあのハンコというものは日常の生活の中で必需品ですけれども普段の生活の中で意識するものではありませんであの街頭インタビューとかアンケートを取りましてもあのやはり皆さん知らないという方がほとんどですでも知ったらそれは嫌だという方が 100% です
だから知っていただければ日本の現状も変われるかなというふうに私たちは信じてこの活動を続けていますであのアフリカではどういうことが起きているかということを実際にいらっしゃった方からお話をいただきたくて今日は、えっと、今から三浦さんにバトンを渡したいと思いますどうもあの Thank you for joining us today. And as I'm a journalist working for the Asahi newspaper, a Japanese daily. And then、um, the author.、Uh, is it? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. まで,です、ね、あの朝日新聞のアフリカ特派員としてヨハネスブルクを中心に活動していましたアフリカの49カ国を担当するいわゆるサブサファラアフリカを担当するコレスポンデントでしたそれでですね、えー、と帰国後ですねあの日本ではやはりアフリカというのは遠い土地でなかなかその現実感がわからないんですけれども、まあ、我々は反抗というので造形を使っている文化ですただアフリカ像が激減しているというのをまあアフリカであの目の当たりにしましてでこれは多くが中国へ密輸されているものなんですけれども我々の文化と密接に結びついているのではないかという形でですねえっと取材を始めた経緯がありますで出ますかね出ませんかね started my work To cover this issue. 帰国後ですね、And, uh, あの一連の取材をまとめてですね、so、先ほど出ていた。いますかね。Can you show the slide of the, of the book? あ、これですね、ごめんなさい。Yes, this is it. えー、と牙アフリカ像の密漁組織を追ってって言ったんです。英語だとですね、多分アイボリー。So, what I wrote in this book、uh, is first of all, you know, the present situation in Africa with regard to African ele elephants. So, you can see wild、uh, ele African ele ele elephants in African countries,、uh, but I just wanted、uh, Japanese people to know that. The, uh, these elephants are being killed. So I went to East Africa. And this was a tasao,、uh, which has an enormous tusk. And, and,、uh, and this an elephant、uh, is now being、uh, you know, depicted in the cover of the book. And, but it was really shocking for me that the,、uh, you know, the part of the、uh, face is gouged out、uh, in order to take out the、uh, tusk. By poacher. So,、uh, in addition to Tasao,、uh, what, what is the situation of African、um, elephants? So, I began to focus my coverage on the tusk and the poaching issue. And、uh, you see, everywhere the、uh, African ele elephants are, are murdered and killed, and the、uh, population of、uh, African elephants, elephants is de decreasing. Even with the baby. Uh, elephants, as you can see in these photos,、uh, their face is just carved out just to take that tusk. So, where do those tusks go?、Uh, so,、uh, I wanted to know the reason why. So, I continued、uh, my reporting、uh, from Eastern、uh, African countries. And、uh, this is a very、uh, dangerous situation, as the correspondents、uh, will know.、Uh, one of them is the Ebola. Uh, and the uh, uh, poverty and the diseases, and also the、uh, civil war going on. And、uh, when you are trying to cover the uh, uh, tusks, it's said to be one of the most dangerous things the journalists can do、uh, because、um, when the poaching、uh, is, is conducted, once you are the target, Of the、uh, poaching organization, there is no way you can protect yourself. It's, it's not like in the civil war where there is a certain demarcation of the、uh, battlefield and the,、uh, you know, the ordinary、uh, places. So these people. They are rangers working in national parks. 
And so uh, they are often engaged in the uh, shooting uh, events. So uh, they risk their lives in order to protect elephants. And um, among those difficult cases that I covered is, and there was this um, incident of shooting which occurred uh, at the uh, uh, Garissa University, uh, which was attacked by Al Shabaab, and then the uh, uh, 146 students were killed. And the uh, the following day, I went there. Uh, to cover this story. And you may think that the, uh, this shooting incident uh, doesn't have any relation to poaching, but when you interview the uh, survivors um, who told me uh, how you know bad it was uh, when they were attacked by uh, Al Shabaabs and they were killed one by one, or the uh, you know their heads were just um, uh, they were, they were beheaded uh, by machetes. And one of the survivors told me at last, Japanese people do do they buy uh, ivory? And um, I thought, you know, it, this is nothing to do with the, the story that I'm covering. But yeah, he told me that the yeah, 40% of the money the, uh, used by Al Shabaab uh, for their uh, campaign uh, comes from poaching. That why the elephant tusk uh, is priced uh, uh, like diamond. That was uh, what he said. And then these uh, uh, photos of the murders are sent to him uh, f f so that, you know, um, uh, as a way of a campaign by Al Shabaab to frighten people. And uh, these are all very shocking photos. And so, what shall we do? What should we do? And there were about 40 or 50 uh, poachers. And then the uh, uh, trailers, uh, both illegal and legal. And then uh, some people who were at the core of the organization, poaching organization I interviewed. And this is uh, called Early. Uh, this, uh, this person uh, was, uh, was the mastermind of the largest Kenyan uh, poaching organization. And then and I went into the uh, uh, courthouse, and then I interviewed him uh, in the prison. And this is a Yantang Ran, and who was uh, one of the uh, 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 one of the Chinese. Uh, she was um, at the top of the um, one of the largest Chinese uh, poaching organizations, um, illegal trade organizations. So where are we as Japanese? What we are trying to do in Japan? would eventually uh, uh, be uh, supporting the, um, these um, terrorist organizations or the uh, poaching organizations. China prohibited already the uh, trade in the ivory, but Japan has not. As long as there is an ivory market somewhere in, in market, the uh, elephant tusk is um, uh, traded at prices, and then uh, the uh, poachers uh, uh, will try to kill elephants uh, just to take their tusks, and the Al Shabaabs and other terrorist organizations will try to uh, uh, gain uh, economically from the illegal trading and the illegal killing. Thank you very much. So why is it that Japan continues to justify its movement? And that is because it still has this, well, even despite the fact that globally there is this movement towards Ivory Free, this is not yet being justified here in Japan. We'd like to hear from the legal expert, the lawyer, Mr. Sakamoto, in regards to this. And actually, this issue of Ivory Trade within the attitude of the international community is something which has had great change. The international ivory trade, according to the Washington Convention or CITES, actually uh, since 1989 has been completely prohibited in regards to the international trade. However, following this, the there was several countries which did want to restart the ivory trade in the 1990s. 
this was a period when these kinds of several countries which were looking to restart the ivory trade and really lobbying around the world for this. And actually, Japan was at the center of this. Japan is a country which, within its international lobbying, in 1999, And then after that, in uh, 2009, so on two occasions, actually had an exception to the CITES, the Washington Convention, for allowing, as an exception, the import of ivory to Japan. So in the 1990s and then through till the 2000s or the first half of the 2000s was when Japan and several other countries were actually going against this wave of prohibiting the ivory trade and actually pushing in the other direction. Many countries around the world during that time were actually looking at their own domestic ivory trade and really having very strict controls on this, looking at together with their counterparts in Africa and looking at how to monitor between these different countries together to monitor this trade as well. But then within these controls becoming stricter, this led to the mood which said, well, perhaps we can allow some exceptions. However, in 2013, this completely changed. What happened at that time was that, well, as people had been thinking that a limited ivory trade should be permitted, but actually this was when once again, a huge amount of poaching once again came to light. And one thing which came to light later actually was looking at more than 20,000 African elephants from 2010 had actually been poached every year, 20,000. Also looking at that actually this increase was happening drastically since 2006. This was something which came clear later. And of course, this was the year that Japan was really screaming about the need for this exception or once again for Japan to be able to trade or have its own domestic ivory market looking at the various processed items and so on, uh, which the tusks were being used for. And so Japan having its policy for asking for more imports so that it could continue its domestic trade. However, it was 2013 when this came to light. And this was when there was a huge shift in global policy. First of all, the United States made a move. At the time, President Obama made the decision in regards to illegal trading in wild animals. Uh, to have across various different agencies uh, initiatives put in place to deal with this issue. And what especially was a huge step was in 2015 when China, uh, when uh, Xi Jinping um, announced that the domestic uh, trade of ivory within Japan would be completely prohibited. This was a huge step. And this wave, this progress is continuing in this direction in 2016. So the following year, the United States and uh, various African countries, actually 32 countries from throughout Africa together, um, a coalition formed to look at the Washington Convention and how all countries should close their domestic trade. And they issued a warning or recommended a warning in regards to this. And this was adopted unanimously. This was a very uh, significant step. So we can see really these global policies really moving forward in this direction, prohibiting not only the poaching, but also through this prohibiting the domestic trade and so on, contributing to an end to poaching. However, there was a country which stood up to make somewhat of a peculiar stand. And this was saying that, well, our country is not, or this, this warning is not applied to our country. And this was Japan. Japan stood up and uh, said this. There is uh, no evidence, according to the Japanese government, that there are high amounts of ivory being come into the country. And Japan is also of the position that it has very strict domestic controls in place. Furthermore, the Japanese ivory trade is not contributing 
It is not complicit at all in the poaching or illegal trade. This is the official position of the government of Japan. From next week, there will be the 18th uh, conference of the parties to the、uh, Washington Convention in Geneva. And at this time as well, Japan is continuing with this position. This is the position it will be putting forward at CITES next week. However, We have this coalition of 32 countries from Africa who are naming Japan and actually saying that Japan should、uh, close its domestic market. This is this recommendation which is being put forward. And most likely, well, there will be a very、uh, big debate about this. Thank you very much. Thank you. So、uh, it's very difficult to change the policy in Japan. So、uh, we are trying to promote the campaign so that we can uh, uh, eliminate the uh, trade uh, uh, de facto. And we launched the、uh, signature campaign last year. Uh, which I would like to touch upon right now. The、uh, issue unique to Japan is the issue of Hanko, or the、uh, name seal. And we wanted to shed light on this part because the uh, uh, ivory, uh, the 80% of the ivory in Japan is used for Hanko, so we created this、uh, video. Take a look. Japan is the world's largest、uh, consuming country in terms of the sale of ivory. So let me、um, ask some explanation. This animation was created with 500 hankos, which were carved individually, and then、uh, we、uh, affixed the, those stamps on 2,500 papers. And the, uh, uh, we had the、uh, cooperation of the uh, uh, professional animators. Uh, this animation was created、uh, by individually、uh, carved hanko,、uh, but the, uh, uh, no ivory is used, only the wooden、uh, hankos were used because of the hankos,、uh, African elephants are being killed. Thank you very much. So, by creating this kind of video,、um, so that the,、uh, you know,、uh, those who are not interested in this kind of issue、uh, will uh, take interest. So,、uh, you know, we are considering the ways in which we can attract the attention of those people who are not. Interested in this issue.、Uh, so that's why we created this video.、Um, another thing that we are doing is to um, uh, uh, you know,、uh, get as, much, as many supporters as possible、uh, to work with us. And by doing so, I think we can change the Japanese society. So that's why we are. The ambassadors who are also here present today.、Uh, to the right, we have Mr. Daisuke Uehara san. Who is a three time Paralympian、uh, doing ice sleigh hockey. And to the left,、uh, Yuna Okanishi san, who is a renowned calligrapher and also a student of Zen. And they would both like to give a brief introduction to. 
their reason for being here today. Thank you, Ambassadors. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. At Vancouver uh, Paralympic, um, I received the um, uh, silver medalist. My name is uh, Uehara. And I retired from the uh, sport, and I have been working for children. And next year, we are hosting uh, Olympics and Paralympics. And despite the fact that yeah, we will be host hosting uh, Paralympics, but yeah, in Japan, in Tokyo, uh, when we want to uh, use the uh, gymnasium, then the uh, you know they say that the uh, we cannot uh, you know have you uh, use the uh, uh, for the Paralympic. Uh, I mean the para, uh, uh, the para sports. Um, so this is the issue that we have in Japan, and the same thing can be said of this and. Uh, 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 African ele elephant, and uh, we want to work with you uh, to solve this issue, sports and elephants. Uh, those are the things that we have to uh, leave, uh, you know, uh, leave to our future generations for children and the uh, grandchildren. That's why I'm here. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Yuna Okanyushi. I'm a calligrapher, um, but I also a modern an artist, so I use the different kinds of paints, uh, as you can see in this uh, works. And then, because of my influence from my mother, I have been uh, much, in very much interested in the environmental issues since I was a small child. Uh, this is the shark, and uh, I, this is uh, the calligraphy work of the, uh, you know, the. Uh, uh, tra trajectory of the uh, uh, shark uh, swimming in the uh, sea. Uh, so this is a kind of uh, works that I produce. And the uh, African elephants are now endangered uh, species. Um, I would like to uh, promote uh, the awareness raising uh, through um, art works. So that's why I support this campaign. Thank you very much. And as we can see here, we also have Crystal Takigawa, for example, or the former captor of the Japanese rugby team, Mr. Hasebe uh, Kise Ayako, very uh, active, uh, well-known people in many different issues, uh, many different fields as well. Uh, recently, we've also had more and more people joining uh, this too. For example, the legendary musician Tatsuya Ishii. And we actually have a video message we would like to share with you today. Uh, we had the very happy news from her uh, just yesterday. This is Crystal Takigawa, and I support this pres uh, project. At the moment, the understanding of animal-related issues in Japan, unfortunately, is something is said to be quite low, even compared to other countries. And I really feel this very often. But within this situation, I think that in our everyday life, we are really overflowing with many different things. But thinking about, well, how did this product come to us? How are we using this within our lives every day? And I think... Well, many people are maybe not aware of this or conscious of these issues in their everyday life. But if we can even a little bit bring our thoughts to looking at these processes of what delivers all these different everyday items to us, thinking of what might come from animals, for example, things being sacrificed in order to deliver them for our use. When we can see many warnings around the world about animal-related issues, but Japan is quite delayed in this. For example, we can see the decline in wild animals around the world. Why is this? One of the reasons for this is that, well, some of their bodies are being used in our daily life and uh, elephant tusks, ivory is an example of this. This is being, for example, used in these name seals, the hanko that we use in our day-to-day -day life without even thinking about it. But this is really endangering the existence of the elephants. If we don't notice this, well, unless we take this awareness to actually pay attention to this, this decrease, the decline will continue and we can only see this path forward. So this is why we need to think about, well, what do we need to do? What is the smart decision to be made? Or are we just going to keep, keep making a choice without even thinking about it? What kind of way of living are we going to move forward with? This is something which the world, this is not only for us humans, we have to live in existence with so many other species as well. And this is really the answer. I hope that as we are moving towards the Olympics and Paralympics in Japan next year, 
Japan can make this deliberate step forward and think that raising a voice is not something embarrassing, but it's something that we have to do. And I hope that all of you will also uh, take your hands up together with us in this campaign as well. We are really in such a critical situation. Please help to uh, look at the lives of precious animals as something that we need to coexist and live together with. Thank you. Thank you very much to our speakers and to our ambassadors. We now open the floor for a Q&A session, where, of course, preference will be given to the working press. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliated media, please. Yes, gentlemen, in the shirt there. Thank you very much. Step forward to the microphone, please. Thank you very much today. I am a freelance journalist called Nakano. There was, of course, a lot of different shocking data today, which was quite surprising. I have several questions, but I'd like to just narrow it down to one, if I may, for Mr. Miura. Within your presentation, you mentioned about the funds, or 40 percent of the funds of Al Shabab coming from poaching, and these words of the student. Uh, I'd like to ask, for example, for the funding for terrorist organizations in Africa. What other kind of funding sources are they, or is ivory and well, elephant tusks really a primary source of their funding? And well, it's quite difficult to put these kind of terrorist organizations in Africa in one uh, aspect. There is, of course, Boko Haram in the West and many different aspects. Of course, uh, ivory is one. There is also human trafficking, the drug trade, and so on are other aspects as well. The 40%, of course, is not a very exact figure. It's not something which can be completely confirmed. But in Kenya, it is said that within... Uh, Al-Shabaab's fund is thought to be around 40% from ivory. That is the generally accepted numbers in Kenya. And this was not something which just this individual student said to me, but actually through interviewing many different people in Kenya uh, said the same thing. Of course, it's very difficult to confirm the exact numbers, but 40% is a figure which is really shared very often. This is, of course, something which I did not know. And of course, for those of us just living in Japan, this is also something which we are not aware of. When we think about just buying a hanko, it may not be directly related, but eventually along this process, along this line, it may actually be contributing to the funding of terrorist organizations. But the fact that people in Africa are afraid or fearful about this potential fact. And so the fact that, well, ivory is perhaps being uh, illegally traded to Japan throughout this process, for example. Uh, you mentioned also in China, it's uh, largely used as a sort of uh, high value. Uh, however, in Japan, the fact that it's coming so much to this point, uh, is there some background more information about the involvement of why it is in Japan? In Africa, looking at the poaching of ivory is something, well, within my uh, research, I showed that there is various uh, government officials related in this process, whether it's people involved in customs agencies and so on. There is this, uh, it's kind of an open secret, uh, this complicity by various governments. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, before we continue the Q&A, uh, don't worry, sir, your questions have been noted. Um, uh, Yamawaki-san would like to uh, very briefly talk about the next few steps of Wild Aid. Sorry, we didn't get that uh, last part in. Anyway, take it away. Yes, as a next step, uh, with a cooperation of uh, businesses, uh, we are trying to um, uh, collect more supporters. This month, the ANA uh, collaborated with us, and within this month, in all the uh, lines, domestic lines, uh, Prince William and the, uh, Mr. Yao Min and the David Beckham uh, are in the video, special video that is run uh, on the uh, ANA. And then we have distributed the uh, uh, red sticker. Uh, this is still uh, not the final version. This is a preview version. So please uh, do not um, disseminate this information outside of this room. But um, Red Nose Campaign, it's called, it's called um, with the cooperation of the influencers in Japan by utilizing SNS social network, uh, we are going to launch this campaign so that we can collect more signatures of support. Excellent. Thank you very much. Back to the Q&A. Uh, I think we have 
Absolutely. Your question has been noted. Absolutely. I think we had a question here first, though. Thank you very much. Can you state your name and affiliation, please? And come up to the mic. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Yahoo News, my name is Shiba. This is a question mainly addressed to Sakamoto-san. So the Japanese government's uh, you know, argument that the, uh, well, the, uh, uh, the fact that, that there are loophole, loopholes in the Japanese relations are widely known internationally, but the uh, the Japanese government is saying that yeah, there are no uh, uh, illegal uh, imports uh, to Japan and the uh, ja domestic uh, tusks uh, ivory are not uh, exported to outside of the country. That's what the government is saying. Then how do you uh, counter-argue that? The, when you think about the, uh, Japan's involvement of the uh, illegal uh, uh, ivory trade, so there is illegal import and illegal export. Up until the mid-2000s, uh, for Japanese market, uh, there were sizable, uh, large sizes of the uh, uh, export, illegal exports. According to record, the, uh, the last one uh, was in the uh, two, uh, 2006, the unprocessed, 2.6 ton of uh, unprocessed uh, tusks. And then the uh, hankos uh, were uh, illegally imported uh, to Osaka port. After that, uh, there has been no announcement from the customs authorities about the uh, large, uh, big size, you know, uh, illegal Imports. Uh, the Japanese government say that yeah, they do not have a, any record, uh, so that means that yeah, there is no illegal import. But uh, is it really so, or is it because the custom agencies overlooked uh, the existing illegal trade? And then towards the uh, uh, CITES uh, uh, COP uh, that will start next week, the Secretariat of the CITES has been collecting the uh, seizure uh, information from different countries, and they have compiled a report on it. And in the report, and there is an assessment of uh, Japanese uh, government's uh, management of the illegal, illicit trade. And uh, the report says that the, uh, it is a blow Average, it is a very poor uh, management. That is assessment. Just because the uh, customs authorities uh, do not uh, have not found any illicit trade, that doesn't mean that there is no illicit trade in Japan. But in terms of the uh, uh, illicit um, export, uh, we have data. 138 seizures were conducted of from the exports from Japan. And then uh, out of that, 113 seizures were conducted in China. So here, what is interesting is that the uh, 113 cases of illegal exports from Japan to China, and among them, 106 cases, the Chinese authorities uh, stopped them. So that means that the, there was o there were only seven cases only uh, which were stopped by the Japanese uh, customs officials. That shows the, uh, uh, the poor control uh, in Japan. Thank you very much. Um, Ma'am, did you have a question? Sorry, and you'll, and, and you'll be next, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, go ahead. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Noriko Hanyu. I write for Alterna. I have several questions, but the first, the Japanese government is taking such steps while looking at this, even uh, there is a lobby behind the Japanese government supporting this. Those interests or, or industries who may be having a profit from this, I think this is most likely the Hanko industry. 
But looking at, well, what industry or do you have any information, first of all, about industries who are profiting from this trade in Japan? The second question is, for example, are you planning any campaigns to hanko stores, for example, those retailers who are selling this product? So, for example, having them to put a sticker up in their doorway saying, we do not sell ivory products, for example. And this might mean that for those people who are coming to buy, even if they might not have been aware about it, that might actually make them notice as a first time. And the third question is looking at uh, illegal imports and exports of ivory overseas. There is actually a petition campaign, for example, Avaz or uh, some of the, the French organization Save the Forest, for example, have had large international petition campaigns about this, for example, in the EU. Uh, looking at stopping, well, I'm not sure whether they call it illegal imports or whether it's the trade itself. So a petition to the EU, for example, this petition campaign. And in regards to Japan, there is, of course, a petition campaign as well. Are you working together with other international NGOs in cooperation? So these are my three questions. Thank you very much. So I will respond to the first question. And, well, first of all, in Japan, the ivory trade, well, who is it who is actually profiting from this? And these individuals or industries, what kind of lobbying are they doing towards the Japanese government and what kind of effect is that having, I believe, was the question. The ivory industry in Japan, we can say it's actually um, quite varied, but within Japan, it's actually the manufacturers who have the uh, the real interest there. It's not the retailers, but the manufacturers of these items. Within the manufacturers as well, of course, there are those who have registered with the Japanese government, and there are around four to five hundred uh, such corporations, and it's one certain proportion of these who are really involved in this. I think it could be said it's around 10 such manufacturers who actually have huge stockpiles of the whole tusks, and they almost without any exception are uh, using these for producing hanko. With or holding these large stockpiles, they also have a great uh, influence and I think that from more than 30 years ago, they have been working together, for example, with pipes, with the uh, Ministry of Trade and so on, as well with METI. And this is recognized, therefore, by the ministry as, a, as um, well, the, the materials required for this are seen as an important industry within Japan. And in regards to any potential campaigns to retailers of Hanko and the name seals, we believe that the issue is not so much at the retailers level themselves. And there are actually, an, or there has been an increase in those who have voluntarily stopped to deal in ivory as well. But as you mentioned as well, uh, there is of course this need for pressure there as well. And the retailers also have this pressure from the industries. So therefore they are perhaps more passive in this. There are some who are actually stopping to trade or stopping to sell ivory, uh, but not so much talking about it so much. Uh, our organization, TAE, is registered here in Japan, the Tears of the African Elephant. First of all, we are working together with Wild Aid, uh, which is, of course, an international organization looking at, well, really as a pioneer and expert in reducing the consumer demand and so on as well. So first of all, as a local Japanese organization, we have paired up together with Wild Aid. There are, of course, many other international organizations such as Avaz uh, and also local organizations such as Mr. Sakamoto's organizations. And we are also taking initiatives to work together or cooperate in various ways. Okay. Thank you very much. And, uh, sir, and Please, thank you very much for waiting. Njimba from Video News. And in, rela in relation to the question just asked, clearly the Japanese government, with regard to this um, illicit trading of the ivory, uh, the gov government is now serious. Um, that is my impression. And there was a reference to the lobby. That the, the, 
despite uh, the fact that yeah, there are these uh, pressure from the international commu uh, community uh, as well as the uh, uh, pressure coming from the CITES, but still the government has not uh, begun in earnest uh, the any activities, and uh, which I think is uh, is really puzzling. And of course, uh, there may be uh, some concerns uh, for the industry, but uh, in terms of the cost benefits, that doesn't really add up. Um, so I really don't understand why the Japanese government uh, is uh, so uh, reluctant. So I don't know, uh, you know, whom to whom this question should be addressed. Um, why do you think the uh, Japanese government uh, is not so uh, active uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to tackle this issue? Maybe, you know, just an impression of, of yours is okay. Okay, so let me answer that question. Uh, the question just posed uh, is really reasonable, and um, I understand it. And um, I have received that same question at least 70 or 80 times in the past. Historical background is one thing. And then uh, also the uh, another aspect is the uh, issue related to the Japanese uh, bureaucracy. In 1989, uh, the ivory trade was banned by CITES. At that time, when the uh, proposal for uh, banning uh, was made, the Japanese um, ivory lobby, uh, you know, interest uh, lobbied very powerfully. Uh, to the uh, meeting uh, in those days uh, uh, not to support it. And in those days, the Japan was the world's largest importer of uh, tusks. And um, in, the, in the past 10 years up to then, the, uh, the population of elephants was halved. And the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan uh, really feared uh, the uh, impact uh, of Japan not supporting this initiative. So the government decided to abstain from the voting. And uh, they said that they are sorry to the industry, that we cannot um, oppose actively. But um, that then they uh, pr promised to the industry that the, uh, they will make efforts to reopen the trading. And the METI uh, began uh, this scheme of subsidy uh, to support the uh, ivory industry uh, in preparation for the uh, uh, reopening of the uh, trade. So uh, this basic position has been maintained up until now. So this, this is completely opposite. So um, uh, you know, Japan uh, actively, you know, uh, you know, and uh, supporting this and uh, banning of the uh, illicit. Uh, I mean, the trading in the uh, uh, tusks and the ivory is complete opposite of the policy that the government has pursued for the last decades. So uh, they cannot do that. So. It has to come top down from the government, or the uh, uh, very important um, allies of Japan uh, should pressure Japan, or the very powerful international voice should pressure on Japan, and then the Japan uh, will be uh, uh, very carefully considering what they should do. But more to the time, if that's okay with everyone, sir, go ahead. Simon Denyer from the Washington Post. Uh, maybe for Sakamoto-san again, but uh, I read as well if you want to answer this. Um, it's my impression that one of the reasons that China banned the ivory trade was that it was hurting its image in Africa. Is Japan's continuation of the ivory trade damaging its image in Africa? Japan's hosting TCAT African leaders in Yokohama later this month. Do you think that's going to be an issue when the African leaders come? Is there awareness, concern within the Japanese government that, that it may be damaging its, its image in Africa? Thanks. You can go with that. We talked about it over lunch. Okay. Yeah. We'll both 
Yes, as you mentioned, I think this is the case. However, Japan, and I think, well, is something, well, it's perhaps not going to catch up with China, but looking at its economic development uh, and really developing this more and more within Africa. And so looking at the need for having more support from African countries is, of course, one factor. But at this stage, until now, at least, Japan, within the past 30 years, looking at, well, those countries which or the uh, southern African countries which had the possibility of exporting ivory to Japan, there are perhaps four or five countries. And I think Japan is really putting its attention towards these four or five countries. Within the southern part of Africa, if you look at the number of elephants, well, we can really see that the highest number of them, of course, are uh, inhabited or in southern Africa. Therefore, looking at... Well, Japan feels that it is responding to the voices of these certain African countries who want to export. Japan says, well, we're not selling it for our own purposes. It's because there are these countries in Africa who actually, as a way to gain uh, you know, foreign currency. So Japan putting its hand up as a partner to import because there is this request from its African partners, whether, of course, this is something we should accept and so on. There are many questions about this. But the fact that there are 32 African countries who are calling for a prohibition on the domestic trade in Japan, and so Japan using this explanation that there is this request from Japan, I think is becoming less and less convincing. I want to emphasize on what Yuki-san was saying. Um, when we were in meeting with the Kenyan um, government as they prepared for the previous CITES, um, they were quite really puzzled on why Japan spent so much energy on supporting and developing Africa, and yet this specific issue cannot be heard when there's such a majority of 32 countries that are wanting you know, the trade to be closed. So I think there's a very difference in the opinion and how what kind of impression this is this issue is giving within between the southern african states and the east african states <clears throat> thank you very much uh, do we have further questions from the floor absolutely sir go ahead not a problem it's just a follow up question uh, in, in case of whaling, uh, we uh, faced a similar situation, or Japan put itself in a similar situation, but at the same time, uh, it spent uh, some uh, money for domestic campaign, so in order to maintain the uh, supportive um, uh, public opinion uh, for the uh, whale. Of course, it's um, condemned by I the international community, uh, but the uh, Sakamoto-san said that the uh, you know, this um, justifying this um, ivory trade. Of course, the uh, government is not engaged in any publicity campaign, but through some channels, public opinion uh, campaign is being conducted, or do you see any such efforts being done by the Japanese government? And the uh, Nikai-san uh, is from the uh, Taichicho, uh, which is famous for this uh, way, uh, of this um, dolphin um, uh, uh, fishing. But the, uh, in, 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 in the dolphin case, the Nikai-san was a key person. But in case of the ivory trade, is there anyone who is a key person within among the politicians? And po uh, among the politicians, the the politicians uh, who would uh, risk his uh, political life uh, in order to protect the uh, industry, um, as far as I know, there is none. Of course, uh, there are some politicians that the interest groups uh, can um, uh, look to for help, but the, uh, as far as I know, individual politicians know. And the, uh, what about the efforts in terms of the communications or pub publicity? I think there are many differences uh, between whaling and the ivory, because right now the, the measures are taken by the uh, Japanese government in terms of communications uh, is that the mechanism of um, domestic ivory trade 
uh, uh, just to uh, convey uh, the messages about the uh, system in place in Japan, and Japan has not done anything about the cultural war or something like that, uh, because they know very clearly uh, what it's going to lead to. So, but in terms of the whale, whaling, uh, at least for some localities, uh, whaling was deeply rooted in the communities. So we we cannot deny uh, this history. And then the uh, uh, you can find the um, uh, whales uh, within the uh, 200 uh, nautical miles uh, from Japanese shores. But that's not the case for elephants. But there was in the past that the, uh, the ivory was part of the Japanese tradition and that was condemned internationally by uh, by foreign media. Then the Kenyan uh, people said that the, uh, you say it's part of the Japanese tradition, but you, you do not have any elephants uh, in Japan. And, but why do you say that the uh, elephants is part of your history and culture? And that was the end of the argument. Uh, for our for our panel to come here and enlightening us on the subject, uh, there'll be a, a photo session now. Uh, but first of all, could I ask everyone to give a hand, please, to everyone? Thank you.